Thank you, uh, Chairman Yasenka, and to the board, I thank you for inviting me to speak to the community. Many people in the building here know me because I came and worked right up there, starting back in 1981 as a music teacher. I have a bunch of my music students out there and a couple sitting up here on the board. So having spent about four decades here, there's a lot that's happened. I joined the uh, Central School Principal's Office in, as the Assistant Principal in 97 and then in 99 as the principal. Therefore, I can say to the students, I've been the principal since the last century. <laughs> I've seen a lot happen in, in all those decades. So tonight, the board asked me to speak directly to the program needs because I do spend a lot of time in that building. To begin with, I'm very confident to say that all at the Central School and the families, everybody works hard to make sure that we make the best of what we're given to work for the students. The success of our students, they start with the family, and they're enhanced by the teaching at our school. We do have a tremendous staff that make do with what, again, whatever is there. It's a joy to work with all those families and the staff. Continuing down, down that same path, we worked hard to make the most of a facility that is simply good, but not great. Again, I want to say that again, good, but not great. Because the structure works, with lots of modifications, it's, but it's not comparable to what you'd find in other communities, especially those communities that have gone through anything to do new or recent uh, capital improvements, and recent in my mind is in the last decade or so. There's a lot of history with the Central School Building at the same time. It actually came in three major construction phases. It actually was, um, oh yeah, there's that other one, the portables years. I don't even consider that part of the structure, so the original structure, 1940s, came along. It was built with those small classrooms, classrooms that were designed what you thought of 80 years ago. But today, we still use those small classrooms, but I have to live with the state rules that says I can only put so many students in those rooms, which is 18. The building had an addition put on in the 1960s. 60s, it was built with great ideas, nice, sizable classrooms. However, it was built with a concrete block wall nothing like we would see today when insulation is uh, the norm. The result is that we have 60-year-old classrooms that cause those boilers to burn excessive oil to compensate for heat loss through the heating season. And then we get the opposite effect in September, May, June, occasionally more, because eight of those classrooms are still in use today, and the air quality is simply awful on those days. Those rooms get very, very hot. In the 1980s, the community stepped up and said, let's put a big addition on. So 30 years ago, this year, we're opening a time capsule pretty soon, by the way, from the kids. Exciting. But 30 years ago, they built a wonderful addition. If you've been to most of the classrooms, it's a very good learning environment. Um, and then the portables years, 1994, 1999, and 2000. It was considered a temporary solution. Penny Williams did an interview with me Back in 2000, Mrs. Graspall and I talked about this temporary solution. I have the article if you would like to see it. And through the years, they served as grade level classrooms and other things, but due to age, security, enrollment trends, we just simply said we can't use them for student instruction anymore. Today, there's a couple of them still there at the Central School. One of them is used strictly for storage. We turned the heat way down, so we're not wasting a lot of energy there. The other unit um, actually was, is used for a workspace for some of our staff and we have a little meeting space in there. It's not used as, as often, but no kids' pieces. And you've probably noticed that one of them's been moved across the street. St. Anne's was very uh, interested in taking the facility in the, between the, the parish and others. They renovated it and there's a wonderful food pantry that takes care of members of our community. So the reality is that Central School as a whole does not support the classrooms and the programs necessary now, and certainly not going on into the 21st century. It's time to make changes to meet the needs of your youngest children. Five big points, safety in the building, teaching space, especially for those small spaces like special education, academic supports, climate control, technology, and class size concerns. 
We do not have enough small learning spaces. We have strategically repurposed closets to become small teaching spaces, and one of them is a copy room. The climate controls to the building are not working in the 60s wing because they can't compensate for what's going on there. The building has been retrofitted with lots of technology, but that has stressed some space needs. We need a new computer lab that is connected to our library. That's the way it's done these days. Enrollment is starting to grow again, creating stress on class size. So how did we get here? There's a lot of reasons why we got here. Again, going back 30 years ago was the last time we did something. Think about what's happened in 30 years. Try to think of your own world 30 years ago. Education changed. Special education law started to change the way we do schools. Specifically at the central school, we had one special education teacher and we contracted some of the support services. Today, to support the needs of our students, we have five special education teachers, two speech pathologists, two occupational therapists, and other support services that are necessary. We ramped up our intervention systems because not all struggling learners need to be part of special education supports. Some of our grade level classrooms that were used 30 years ago have been repurposed to take care of those programs. So this is why when you walk through our school you see cubicles in a classroom to create multiple little teaching stations. This is also the reason those closets are now instructional spaces. Let's talk about technology. In the late 1980s into the 90s, everybody changed with technologies. I had an Apple II GS. Things changed. That, our schools have changed with that. Naturally, they came part of every classroom of our school. It's in your pocket right now, probably. At Central School, we've got them all over the schools, all kinds of devices. It's fully wired. Technology cut into the classroom space. First of all, it cut into the library and cut a, a corner out of our library to create a hub where everything gets wired back to. We're also using one of our classrooms that could be a grade level classroom as a computer lab. Community grew. I've watched Hampstead grow. When I got here, there were 200 students at the Hampstead Central School. Actually, it was 199 according to Bob Little. Um, the community gro has grown since then. Continuing right along, they, you built this school here, which is beautiful. This is a beautiful school. But now it is showing its age. To learn more, you should take a look at our capital projects list. That's been discussed a lot with this board. I urge you to take a look at that or ask more questions. I'll give you one example. The board spent an awful lot of time trying to figure out that they put into the budget a paving project, which is very costly for this building. And that's just one piece of that list. In 1994, they started adding temporary solutions. A portable came, and then that went on and created its own history. School security is very different today. You can't ignore this. Our concept of security continues to change because of tragedies and other things that have happened around our nation. I can mention the name Columbine or Sandy Hook, and you can probably name other schools that have gone through tragedies. You can also think about where you were on September 11th in 2001. I was sitting at the Central School trying to figure out what we're going to do for our kids that day. Here in Hampstead, we tighten up many layers since all of these things have been changing the way we do business. A recent example is we worked with New Hampshire Homeland Security. With their guidance support, we qualified for some grant funds. The board gave us additional funds, and we made accommodations to address some of the problems. But they, the bigger problems can only be addressed through a design. So where are we today? As I shared a year ago, there is a trend, and I'll remind you what that trend is. The homes that have children now had children that are sitting on the board now or they're sitting out in this audience or their parents at the central school uh, because they've moved back into town or bought their parents home and they have little kids in those schools. The net result is that we have more kids at our schools and you're still seeing a growth. Central school had the 430 students two years ago. Last March when I spoke we had 470. Today I walked out of the school there were 482 students. That means we picked up 50 new student, 52 new students without additional classroom space, actually less, because we closed the portables in that time. The administration, staff, and school board made important decisions over the past couple of decades about class sizes. This town has always maintained that as an importance. 
but we're running out of options to continue to make those modifications. Last year, the problem was in grade three. This year, the problem's in grade two. Next year, I'm projecting we'll probably looking at third and fourth grade somewhere hovering around our maximums. The central school building has those ventilation and climate systems that do not meet the expectations of a 21st century school or public building. I can give you, a, 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 I can point to 10 specific classrooms that have constant heat, cold, or ventilation issues that interrupt learning. Parents have actually come to school and brought their children home. Most of those classrooms are in the 1960s wing. As an example, we had eight classrooms on those very hot days last fall that were hovering around 90 degrees temperature in the classroom. It's just a few degrees different from what was just outside the window. So what we did is we took some of those kids out of those rooms in the hotter afternoon, put them in the library, which meant hundreds of other kids didn't have access to their library. We continue to be challenged as we repurpose classrooms in small spaces. As an example, we have a library that's beautiful. I mean, lots of great things happening there. However, there's a ventures classroom in the back. I'd like to share an example of what I observed. I spent some time watching a ventures class the other day. It was wonderful, great class. I couldn't help but notice I'm sitting watching children trying to learn and I'm hearing a conversation from the librarian with a staff member, school business, talking about learning. And there was a couple of little girls just a few feet away near the stacks talking about what they were gonna read. And then I had a flashback. Back in the 1970s during my student teaching, I remember visiting an open concept school. I hope that also makes you realize that that wasn't a good part of education. The compromise is our library is now a major distraction to learning for some students. Central School does not have enough bathrooms. You heard that earlier. The most obvious problem is on the second floor. Here's some data. 300 students are typically on the second floor at any point during the school day. For all those students, there's one large bathroom for the boys and another for the girls. I'll just give you this one number. 150 little boys sharing a bathroom. Think that went through. One challenge that came from the portables when we moved music back into the building is we now hear those beautiful sounds coming out of the music room. Everything from African drumming to chorus to song. Everybody thinks it's wonderful unless you're the teacher on the other side of the wall that is adjacent to it. Um, the downside of that space is we, we have a problem, but these guys have come up with a great idea to move things away. If we continue to keep music on the stage, we also have a problem with student aggress, even though I think we found a solution that's acceptable. Again, good, but not great. The safety interest to Central School is a problem waiting to happen. We have many cameras now, automated locks in place, but that is not enough. Last year, I shared that the access to the gym and the cafeteria are easy targets for somebody with ill intentions. For, for everyone that's been to Central School in the last six months, you know we made a change which means it's much more difficult to get into those lobbies. We spent thousands of dollars to improve the security and now have an improvement that is an incomplete solution. Another important improvement put in place this summer was the locked area up on entry. To get into Central School, you now have to walk up to a little box, talk to the little box, push a button, someone in the office talks back to you, and then they'll open the door for you. You can get into the school, but you can't go very far. You can go in the lobby and go up and down the stairs, but all the doors are locked up and down those stairs now. So by locking those doors, it's a secure area. That's great. However, we now have lost a main path for students to travel around their school. So the students are restricted on that front stairwell that they have to be escorted by a member of the staff that has the fob to get in and through those doors. So the educational space design proposal that was sh shown to you this evening has a lot of good solutions to this. So please, here's just a few things to add as I close out here. By relocating that main point of entry, the school will have a more efficient and inviting point of entry. Visitors can be greeted with an outdoor buzzer. We'll probably keep that. That's a staple in schools now. But a few steps later, you're gonna talk to a human being and they can actually greet you on through to the building. That's much nicer. We're gonna move the nurse's office right next to the principal's office. Hallelujah, that's just wonderful. Um, 
bottom line, safer and more welcoming for those families. The dedicated music room is strategically located to account for chorus rehearsals, sound performance areas. The, li the current library will be repurposed into two grade level classrooms and the new library will have an intentional design what we would expect in a 21st century library, such as technology, books, maker space, classroom space, and proximity to the computer lab. That's part of the design. The number of core classrooms will address the class size issues by simply increasing the total of grade level classrooms a little bit. We are currently using 22 classrooms for the grade levels uh, K through four, and then we have two uh, dedicated preschool rooms. The new design actually has two more classrooms, a moderate gain but gives us a little bit of room. So a future principal, I emphasize that, will have flexibility to take care of those things. Some of the small rooms will be repurposed or renovated to better meet the needs of instructions that require a small room. That's part of the design. The new cafeteria is great for the school as well as the community. You guys need another large space in this town because there's a lot that happens in this little town. We know the cafeteria and the gym at the central school are overused. And that concludes morning, day, night, weekend. One more space is what this community needs. The traffic at Central School at that car loop out back is really a fascinating place to visit. Many people avoid it intentionally. But the new design, again, accounts for what we need back there. I can't emphasize enough those climate upgrades that are in this design, how important they are. Redesigning the walls, windows, putting in heating systems, is better for the students and the taxpayers. You're wasting money in that wing and the students are not in an optimum learning environment. So please consider the proposal means to address the needs of children for many years to come. After 30 years, it's time to repair and renew Central School. Waiting one more year for an idea is not solving the problem. That's what's been going on. It's time to just go ahead and move forward. The need for a solution is today's problem. So I'll close with words attributed to Abraham Lincoln, one of my personal heroes. You cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. Thank you. <laughs>